boys. William. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Good, good. How about yourself, Raymond? It's been a day. It's been a day, William. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Do share. Uh, you can, if you'd like to go to simplemindsportshow.com and look at my newest blog, it's all, it's all there. All That's right. even new to me. I haven't got my hands on it. So if you want so you want a taste of the grammar guru, you, you got to get there quick. I always love going back to see it and all the changes Rich has made. I'm like, God damn it, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just punctuation, mostly. I never listened in school. You know that. No. If you, if you take a breath, you need a period. Well, you're <laughs> No, you question the comma. It's oh, a right. <laughs> right. I, forgot, a I fucking forgot about that. <laughs> you take a breath. You have to think. Is it a comma or a period? If you're wheezing, it's a semicolon. Yep. <laughs> That's just me going up the stairs. <laughs> just thinking through it. Yeah. How about you, Billiam? It's Sunday. Uh, you're uh, the queen. The queens. Uh, are they getting the uh, pomerade ready for your trip south? <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the jets getting fueled up as we speak for later this week. Do you uh, send someone there beforehand to make sure there's no like assassins trying to get you down there? Come on, of course. <laughs> okay, I, I did. I didn't know. Of course, I'm just making sure. Of course. Bill's underworld's not <laughs> assassins. It's just like meth heads with a bat. Yeah. 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 Or, where you been, Queen? You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since you've dealt with the methods, Bill. You like to you like you uh, surround yourself with the tinder whores these days. I think the tinder whores army, just, just the army, just the yeah. army, yeah, <laughs> just for protection. Yeah. yeah. Have you dabbled into a little bit of that? Uh, those Florida gummies already? I can barely <laughs> see those baby blues. Come on. <laughs> Come on, it's Sunday. <laughs> Did the sun rise today, Rich? I mean, come on. My apologies. My apologies. Very <laughs> good. Very good. All right, boys. Well, a lot to get into. Let's go ahead and do it. This is the Silver Mind Sports Show. Monday headlines, March 29th. March is almost come and gone. Um, shame. It's a shame. What a shame. Well, welcome shame. to the show. Ray, you're, you're a fan of March? No, but if I said thank God, you would have probably spit all over me and said, you idiot, you say that every month. That's true. That's why it, it, really? actually really? is why it jumped out at me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You drinking water there, bud? Mm-hmm. You're still on the, is this why you're so angry? Because you're on this health kick? Well, I'm not angry. I mean, please, go to the blog. Read the blog. You'll get a kick out of it. Is it because Kelly yelled at you for drinking too much, and now you're just drinking nothing but water? No, I'm trying to lose weight, though. I see the picture that I sent you guys, and I just was like, oh, Which disgusting. One? <laughs> the dark <laughs> side of the fupa. The dark side of the fupa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whenever you get a, a shadow over your fupa. Uh, bike, bike ride hey, season, Raymond. Drink more water. Uh, but not if White Birch is involved. I can't believe you don't have one of those on hand. White Birch Brewing uh, down in Nashville, New Hampshire. Ray, address, please. 460 Amherst Street. Head on down to the tap room, uh, Sweet 16 this weekend. The tournament's still going on. Uh, obviously, uh, sports are year-round. They always got shit going on down there. They got flights. They got pints. They got hats. Uh, just for you, not for your buddies. And if you see them in the stores, don't forget to tell them the Simple Minds boys sent you White Birch Brewing. Um, we had th- a decent weekend for, uh, for civil mind sports, Ray, I guess you're not drinking now, which is a lie and dumb, but I had a lot of happy beers last night. Happy, beers, happy beers, not sad beers, the Bruins and the Celtics. I had a lot of happy beers all weekend. That's <laughs> no. cause is that cause you shut your phone off and we're just sitting in your bathtub full of filth. Misery is what I like to call it. That's okay. what I call it. Yeah. I mean, them. Yesterday kind of sucked. I got really drunk, happy beers on Friday night, and then yesterday, a little more happy beers today. No beers. Oh, one beer, two beer, three beer, no beer. No beer. <laughs> no, no beer. Guys, yeah. No wonder you guys are so quiet. You're just fucking hungover. All right, no problem. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. 
well, today we're gonna today we're gonna start Celtics, so we're gonna work our way through. We got a, pretty much everyone to get to. Uh, Celtics won back to back for what I'm guessing is the first time this season. I, I can't think of any other time that they won back to back games, so let's just go with it's the first time. Uh, they did not have Evan Fournier, Fournier, who they recently traded for because Fournier. he got COVID. Uh, leaving Florida, go figure. Uh, Tristan Thompson and Langford were also out because of safety protocols related to COVID. Uh, but somehow they beat the Bucks on Friday night, 122 to 114. That was their first game after the deadline. It seemed like they had more energy. The first half looked good. Um, I tuned in close more of the second half. And not to not to bring this team down because they went on to beat the Thunder last night. They looked shitty early in the against the Thunder game. They looked good early against the against the Bucks, but then late against the Bucks, it was just a lot of the same ISO ball, hero ball, one on one. They just were lights out. They were just hitting their shots, and that brought energy to the team. I I don't I don't mean to bring a negative into a positive situation, but I didn't see a whole lot different in these last two games and these last two wins. You're this you're the team that we would always make fun of. You, you're living and dying by the threes. You're living and dying by Jason Tatum making shots. When he makes shots, he's energized, he's engaged, Happy. and he's one of the best players in the NBA. When he he's misses, not, he turns into Kyrie he's a, Irving. He's a crybaby little a little bitch. prick out there. He's a baby back bitch. And uh, I said twice, yeah, I don't so want to make a, a, po- a negative into a positive, but I, I feel like I managed to do that pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so, well done. Which are you guys of the? Uh, what, I guess, what, where do you stand now with the Celtics after these last two games? Is there a little bit of hope after the trade deadline that sparked a little bit of juice in them? Obviously, we have yet to see Fournier. The two bigs that they brought back had contributions, and Robert Williams looks really good. Just to give you one last thing, I'll throw it over to you. In that um, Bucks game, first of all, when he was matched up against Giannis, he did well. He did well. Hmm. He had 20 – he's athletic long enough to stick with Giannis. And Giannis has never really given the Celtics – that much trouble they kind of know how to bottle him up it's middleton who shoots like 89 percent against yeah he's there they just leave him open because they bottle up anyway that's an aside um time lord had 27 minutes seven points nine rebounds five blocks couple assists five assists too right he was all over the map um obviously brought the energy so you know, if you want to go to the positive, Rob Williams looks good. He's going to get a ton of minutes because the Celtics just missed out on every buyout option. <laughs> yep. That's the Celtics. I throw it to you, Raymond. Uh, give me your give me your take on the on the C's over the weekend here. Yeah, so it gives you a little hope. Maybe they're a six five seed now with all the trades and shit. But yeah, I don't I don't think anything is going to make them go to the championship or Eastern conference finals. I mean, they're pretty much back, back to being all right, a decent team, but nothing to write home about. Yeah, Bill, I would say that, well, I don't know. It's two games. They, they could fall back on their fleet real quick, but you have to think that this little jolt of energy and just quickly too, I, I put this in a blog. We're really pumping our blogs Ooh. because we like them. Uh, the, the pity party that these guys had for themselves had a team meeting after the trade deadline to say goodbye to their friends. Jason Tatum was quote unquote heartbroken, heartbroken to see his really Javante good friend, Green. Javante Green. Marcus Smart, Smart was praying for the best, but preparing for the worst. Like it's just the fucking trade deadline. You guys aren't going to war. Holy shit. Is this team soft? Anyway, what do you it's think a, they're going to do? It's a generation thing. Build? It's a generation thing. They're it all might soft, be, man. Like, holy uh, shit. The fucking, the sappiness, like, You'll see him in the off season in Vegas with hookers. It's fine, man. Like he's just going to Orlando. They're not going to Afghanistan. Dude, you Good see it though. God. It's, well, Javante Green might be out of the fucking league, but yeah, that's he's, he's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. You you see it in the generation though, Ray. I, I mean, I work with people like that coming in fresh out of college, 23, 24 year old kids. They, they're all the same. NBA players are no fucking different. But I mean, the good thing is now you, you move Tice. Now you're seeing my uh, chapter one, Robert Williams in there. Um, Start chapter minutes. What yeah, what does what chapter one mean? That didn't correlate, but okay. No. Think about it. Anyways. All right. Oh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. I get no, it. but I mean, you, you see it and now you're, you're, you're finally <laughs> seeing him start. I mean, he's been your best center, maybe one of your best players all year. 
you know, I get he's on minute restriction now, but I mean, it's it's good to see him, especially at Milwaukee. You know, I mean, five blocks, that's what you need. You need that rim protector and a guy that's going to play low. So it's nice to see him get some starting minutes. Going forward, nah, this team doesn't, they're not, you missed out on every buyout option. You're a middle of the pack Celtics team right now. I mean, I, I just don't think you got that much better having, you know, Fournier or Fournier or whatever. Gang Green, just call him Gang Green. Gang Green, I mean, yeah. You're still just the middle the green of the pack cornet, team. The green cornet doesn't do it for you guys? The big seven-footer draining threes? No, and, and the biggest problem is, nope. you know, this week, last, what, two years ago, Kyrie Irving said the young guys don't know how to win. Man, it's the, only, he right? fir- it's the only first and only time I'll ever agree with that cunt, but he's right. These kids don't know how to win. Until they figure that out, you're not better than a – your fifth best team maybe in the East? Yeah, he might have been right, but that's why he was brought there, and he bailed like a little cunt so yeah. he, he might have been right but he was brought there to be the leader to be the guy that finishes and wins me, but... and guess what he's never done that and he went and had to go assemble the most talent on one team I've since the seen. nba maybe has <laughs> ever seen uh with them picking up blake griffin on the buyout and then uh picking LaMarcus up aldridge. lamarcus aldridge who six both are pretty much stars. washed up but let, you know let's see how it plays out and uh kevin durant's hamstring is yet to be determined uh good to go but you have the league MVP in James Harden and, you know, the league's top three point guard in, in Kyrie Irving. Plus, like you said, Ray, six all-stars or ex-all-stars. Fuck Kyrie Irving. Fuck him and the kids don't know how to win. So another blog on the site. I'm going to stop doing those plugs, but I wrote this a long time ago. The, you, the expectations for this team needed to change this year. You lost your veterans. You lost Gordon Herod. Your team, skill-wise, got worse, even though you want to wrap it up and tell them to get on the court, Ray. I know you want Gordon out of here. You, can, you should be able to say definitively that they were better with Gordon Hayward than without Gordon Hayward. Facts. Eh, they, he never played, so how could you say that? Okay. Um, God, either, either way, going into the season, your expectation needed, needed to change the Eastern conference finals. I think were still something that they could get there, but like you, you handed your team over to a 23 and 24 year old. You had to know some lumps were coming, but the surprise was just how little it looked like they gave a shit in that really long stretch in whatever February. And then now, you know, we're still seeing it here and there in these games. If that changes, if they come out and play hard every game and lose in the fourth quarter because Smart's hucking up threes or Tatum's turning the ball over, you know what? I'll be okay. They'll win enough games to, like you said, Ray, get the fourth or fifth seed. They'll get to the second round. Maybe a ball bounces their way. They get back to the Houston Conference Finals. More, li- more than likely, Bill, you'll be right. Two, two, they'll be bounced in the second round. But I don't care as long as they play hard. As long as they play hard and play right and give themselves a chance, that's as long as the product's okay, then I can get infuriated and yell at the and throw my shoe at the TV in every fourth quarter. I have no problem with that. That's what you should expect by a team that's led by a 23 and 24 year old. But if they come out for the rest, you know, at any point during the time, the rest of the season and put their heads down and, and don't act like they give a shit, then, you know, we're back. I'm back out. There's a good chance they miss the fucking playoffs when you play like that. So, mm-hmm. and if they miss the playoffs, Ooh, heads oh, should fucking roll, I mean, Stevens. I, I've told you I want them to miss the playoffs. Get a fucking lottery pick. This team, ugh, ugh, fuck them. They don't know how to win. Just go, get a lottery pick. Maybe you're gonna I draft disagree with that. Try to move. You're, I just don't. I just feel like you didn't do enough, and you still, you're still lackluster. If you Look, miss if the you, playoffs, you have to be the 11th seed in the fucking Eastern Conference because they expanded the playoffs this I year. Know, I know. It's, so it's kind te- of stupid. I hate how they do that too. So therefore, I mean, if you are the 11th seed, I mean. Everyone in management should be fired. Like no yeah, one. There's should be no way out. they're no getting there. Away. So you should be as good as possible. You should also be as good as possible because you're not going to improve your team in the lottery. You're Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown is your team right now. You need to give them every opportunity to grow, develop, and become guys that can win for you. And that means going to the playoffs and giving them those, those experiences. Not going and getting the twelfth pick and drafting another Romeo Langford to sit on your bench. Well, the main red claws. Perfect. I mean, Red Claw's coming back next year, baby. Come on. Maybe Red we should Claws become season ticket holders. <laughs> What'd you call them the other day, Bill? The Red, the Red, Red Lobsters. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Go Lobsters. Go, Go Lobsters. lobsters. Uh, yeah, and then news today broke that uh, Andre Drummond is going to the Lakers over the Celtics. Surprise, surprise. I don't even – I don't – the only, the only reason I was okay with that is if he buried Tristan Thompson, which I don't think they're going to do because that's not what Brad Stevens does. He doesn't bury anybody. He lets everybody play, especially a $9 million veteran. He, he was kinda... coming back to play. So that would have meant yeah. less minutes for Rob Williams. And um, I don't know. He's just not that 
he's not that good of a player. He's better than than Tristan Thompson, but I, I don't think that it would have been managed well enough. I wonder if the Jays are lobby. I wonder if the Jays lobby for uh, Robert Williams being the starter lineup because they do look more rejuvenated now and they look more happier on the court with him in the lineup. So maybe that was part of the whole trade process too, was getting it so that big Rob Williams was uh, starting. I mean, maybe that'd be nice. I mean, he's uh, he's been your best big big guy all year. You want to get him in there. It sucks. He just needs to stay on the court. He's always hurt. He's got a hip problem. Now I think his knees banged up too. So what about his back? Yeah, his back. He's got a fucking array of injuries. So what about his like, neck? What about his pussy? <laughs> it's cracked. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we'll find out. But they held a candlelight vigil for Tice leaving town. So I don't know. Oh, my you, God. You gotta... Fuck Daniel Tice, <laughs> dude. Daniel Tice, you'll never hear from Daniel Tice again. And you notice that all the green teamers that were upset that they traded him are already on to Mo Wagner and fucking Who? Luke Cornet. They already Mo forgot Wagner. Daniel Tice fucking played here. Another overrated Celtics that will never be heard from again. Uh, all right, we got to move on. The Bruins escaped the Sabres as we record right now at 645 on Sunday. They are down one nothing to the lowly Devils, who they have had struggles with all season. They haven't beat the Devils, have they? Did they beat them once the first time? I think, oh, they, beat them the, I think yeah, they lost the last twice. their last two games against them. Uh, either way, the um, the Sabres game was looking bad for a while. Uh and they pulled it out. They pulled it out. McAvoy turned it on in the third period. Dude, he owned the third period. That's the reason they fucking won. You know, he set up the third, the first goal with the second, sorry, the tying goal with Nick Ritchie. And you watch him. He was a monster, that whole fucking shift. And then even on a, like Craig Smith, it kind of energized him because when you score like a minute and a half later, two minutes later, you score with Craig Smith there too. So yeah, he dominated. It's, it's pathetic, dude. It, you, it's a pathetic showing against fucking uh, Buffalo. You have no one though. Everyone's out. Marshan was out with COVID or a COVID test, whatever. Yeah, he's out again today, too. But so you got Sanishan back. Jeremy Lazon, I think, is coming back. Sanishan looks like a little bit of a bright spot, considering he's, you know, we thought he was going to flame out of the league, but he's kind of looked decent the last couple of games up there. And that That's speed. That third line with Charlie Coyle, and I read something, too, on one of the Bruins' websites. It was, you know, Coyle needs a guy that could really move the puck and really like a speedster to kind of bring out the best of his game. So, I mean, they've kind of looked like they, they've they clicked a little bit. And you see that a little bit why him and Craig Smith got a, got along for a little bit. And then they've been up and down. You know, Craig Smith's a guy that got to bring us a lot of energy. So, I mean, if he finds a home there, hopefully it could get some scoring going. I mean, Charlie Coyle, I think, is the most important guy. If you can get him going, start scoring some goals in that third line, you know, you, you Yeah, you a lot okay. of ifs, That's, what's, uh, and candies and – Cuts in that. There's so much with this oh, yeah, nuts, team right now. Buds, they're, I think was, I like they're hanging on by I, a thread. I like the cuts better. That was better. They're hanging on uh, by a thread. If Philly didn't suck so bad right now, the, the, uh, you know, you're, you, you're, you just got to be better than the Flyers. Well, and, you uh, can tell that, you know, they're they're in a bad place. They, you know, the uh, it was reported on, and you have to think that Cassidy leaked this himself that uh, or, or allowed them to leak him F bombing the team. Was fucking awesome. Do you have it? It was like, you know, you score some fucking goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the net and stop signing like pussyfooting around and score some fucking goals or shoot some fucking pucks. Or shoot something. some fucking pucks. Go to the fucking net and score some fucking goals. Yeah. <laughs> That's simple enough, right? Do simple it. enough. And then if you watch that game, I mean, in the first, I think they actually got in trouble shooting at it too much because there was fucking lollipopping it up into the into the at the you know at the goaltender there. And uh, and then the third period, like you said, McAvoy kind of took over, and they their skill took over. Like similar he to what I, Morris this year, it's going to be a fucking joke. He's been that good. He's been really, really good. So good. Uh, we'll see what happens today. But you know, the news here for the Bruins is they're not good enough. I mean, they're not good enough. It it, it, it sucks. They're in a bad division. They would in any other you know in a regular year they probably get into the playoffs with a, a whatever six, seven, eighth seed. But this year there's a good possibility they missed the playoffs. However, this is the sixth trade deadline Don Sweeney has been in. He's made a move at every single one of his previous five. We expect another one to be made. And the, and the question is, does it make a difference? So uh, Matthias Ekholm 
is still on the radar for the Bruins. He's a guy that still keeps popping up as a left shot defenseman um, that can solve some of your problems, but obviously not the ones we're talking about. Uh, everyone knows they need scoring. Everyone knows they need right wing help. You're getting a, a, a good look at the guy that's at the top of the list on the trade rumors uh, two nights in a row, right? They play back to back. So they or two and three, either way, they get the, they got the devils um, score in back to back games here. Palomari uh, on his last year of his deal. Bruins ran on him last year. Doesn't sound like he's going to extend in New Jersey. It's a first round pick and a prospect maybe. And I'll throw the other guy at you, Bill, that we've been going back and forth. Uh, Garland out there and your Phoenix uh, Coyotes. I don't have that whole story there. I don't know n- shit about Coyote hockey, but seems like he's on the outs with that team. He's got term. Doesn't seem like it'll take a lot to get him. Um, he should so be your target. I mean, that's I would love that move. And then the last one that I sent you guys today, where was that sports net? Um, oh, DeBrus blue check mark. DeBrus, DeBrus Danica, Danica and, a and a first for, for Taylor, Taylor Hall. for Absolutely half a season of Taylor Hall. You, is this not. fucking, are they high? Who Absolutely the hell is this not. blue check mark idiot? Anyway, uh, your thoughts on Sweeney, the trade deadline, April 12th. And, uh, and the Bruins making a move to to solidify themselves in what what, it, what if they make the moves? What if they make all the moves? What does it do I, to them? Yeah, I mean, I expect you know you you mentioned that he's made five trades, you know, and this is his sixth one. All five trades involving uh, right. I think six right, trades in five years. Actually. Yeah, and they were right wing right wingers, and all those. You, Over so, five. He, so he's. <laughs> The Rick Nash was the biggest one. You know, he got a concussion late in the year that basically ended his career. I mean, you wanted to kind of re-sign him. I expect a move like that. Paul Mary would be a rental. He'd probably come cheaper. I wouldn't give up a first and a prospect for him unless you could resign him. Like Garland's the guy. And if you think he's got 25 or 26 points on the on the season right now, 20 of them are on five on five. You're 30th in league right now. You need guys that are going to score five on five. Paul Mary has not looked great this year. You know, last year he was having a lot better year. And, it, and it's kind of concerning to me as in a contract year. So hopefully that you can kind of get them, you know, second, third round pick and maybe a cheaper prospect. But I mean, as far as Ekholm goes, that, that price is going to be, I think, still sky high. I think that the, you got to look for the second and third options for the left side, just because, I mean, he, he'd make a difference. But those two guys, whether it's Garland, Garland or Ekholm or Paul Mary and Ekholm, you're still you're not there. I don't think you're that good enough. You know, you need to make at least two or three moves to bring in scoring. And then obviously at home in the back end, you're still not there. You're still not better than the fucking Toronto Maple Leafs. You're not better than, yeah. you know what I mean, Tampa. That, <laughs> but you don't know. Sp- you don't Spiley know Islanders. this year. You, you never played any of those teams. So how do you know if you're better than the Maple Leafs or the Lightning? That's the only thing. That's the, the playoffs are going to be tricky also, this year. Don't underestimate the Toronto stink. Well, I mean, they're going to stink, but I'm just saying they're not the best team in Canada for a reason. I mean, what about all Kucherov's, the Canadian teams suck? Kucherov's coming back too, or what is that? That's the guy in Tampa. He's coming back for the playoffs now, so it's – Yeah, you're you're not going to make – I mean, look, the you know, a dream scenario, say you go out and get all three of these guys that you're rooming to, uh, Ekholm, Palmieri, and Garland. Um, yeah, you can make a run. I mean, your first line is good enough, and if Tuca comes back and plays like Tuca, you can make a run. You might get lucky. If Tuca steals – Tuca, Tuca is – capable of stealing you a series he would have to do it for you to make a run so you're dealing with if buts candies and cunts but i i I, sure. I do think they still need to make a move and garland's a good guy he's a he's a situate guy i think right yep yeah and a then palmary spends his off seasons in massachusetts yeah, he lives in boston close with coil he's close with wagner you know the local guys there so there's connections there um I don't know what their trade clauses are, if, if they have a no move or not, but I don't know. Look, I, 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 you know where I stand. I've been like this for a year and a half. The Bruins need to make a move. They need to do something. I know that this deadline is not going to be Krejci out the door, Tuka out the door, anything like that. But if you can move on from DeBrusque, who I don't think is working, um, and, and give up a prospect in a first and bring in a couple guys that you might see as your future, not only this year, but as your future, yeah, I mean you got to keep you got to keep taking a hack at that fucking right wing that's been a problem for five years, six yeah. years. You got to keep making a hack at it. Um, all right, well, let's see how they do. Bill, what's the update on the game right now? Uh, I'm, I, I still think it's one nothing. Bruins are still trailing. Okay. Uh, last hockey news: 
I, I just I wrote this down imagining what Bill's face was like when he read it live on the air for the show because we know he reads the emails as we go through. What uh, the oh, I read it. I saw it earlier. I was like, why are we going to talk about this? The Na- National Women's Hockey League, which is up and running. It's actually at its championship game. Boston versus Minnesota. Isabel, Isabel Cup final. Uh, yeah, go Sammy Davis. She's go Sammy, go. Go go Sammy Davis. Boston pride. Isabel Number one overall pick. At a BU. 657. Oh, you got to beat that? <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't hear. I said 658. <laughs> okay. Let me just write that down. Two beeps. Good. Uh, all right. Hot news over the weekend. Friday, this broke. The 49ers traded the farm to move up, and they traded two future first round picks this year's first round pick and a third round pick to move up to from the 15th spot. No, I'm sorry. From the 12th spot to the third spot in the NFL draft, pretty much guaranteeing they are taking their quarterback for the future. A lot of uh, scuttlebutt and question marks on who that's going to be. Chris Sims has it as Mac Jones, an NFL ready quarterback. Uh, There's rumors that Trey Lance might be the project. They might want to keep Jimmy. They immediately came out after the trade was announced and said they are not moving on from Jimmy Garoppolo. And then the latest today out of whoever, whatever Patriot mouth got that news is the Patriots are quote unquote, not looking to acquire Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, shit. That was some ESPN scrub, but he had blue check mark. Yeah, he had a blue check mark and he had uh, dick marks on his hand from getting Bill, getting Bill hard for that one. Um Last point on this, I, I we talked about it, 49ers. So 49ers made this move. The Jets are obviously in second. You're talking about a 4-5 quarterback heavy draft. Uh, they could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 if you really wanted to look at mm-hmm. Maybe not 5, but they Where's could Bengals go. Bengals picking 5th. Bengals are 5th, so they're, yeah, they're not so going to the, take them. They could uh, one, trade 1, 2, 3, though. 4, 6, they could trade out. So either way, we Robert Sala is the new head coach of the Jets. He was from the 49ers organization. You have to think that they have some good insight on what the Jets are going to do. They gave him the opportunity to move up. If we want to, if we want to go off the rails here, maybe the Jets are not looking to take Zach Wilson. You would say, how fucking stupid is that? Well, they're the Jets. I don't know. There's a lot to th- there's a lot to move around the board here. It's going to be interesting to see what they do uh, as it obtains to the Patriots. What do you think the Patriots situation is at right now? Ray, do you think this was overall good or bad for the Patriots uh, that the 49ers moved up and why? Initially, when I saw it, I thought it was good because then I'm like, well, if they're getting their quarterback of the future, that means <clears throat> there's another quarterback on the move. But listening to more sports people, uh, when Jimmy got traded there, he didn't play till half the season because they wanted to work him into the system. Same thing with Kirk Cousins in Washington. They had to work. Uh, Kyle Shanahan worked him into the system. He didn't play right away. He, had, he wanted him to learn the thing. So maybe the whole goal is to keep Jimmy there for this season and then next season, see you later. But this season, I feel like he's going to stay there and mold whatever quarterback, let them mold whatever quarterback they draft, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, whoever the fuck it is, and just you know have him in the wings, being hot behind him, helping with the playbook and still playing. So, yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. Dude, didn't Jimmy play? Oh, like hold, week on, two hold on, hold on. Sorry. After the trade, nope. Um, he got traded mid season. I think he sat for a couple weeks. Yeah, He's, it was like week it, two it, or week three. He played pretty quick. But 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 right, it's just before you go, Bill. Do you think so? Do you think overall? So you don't think that it's it makes it a better chance for the Patriots to get Jimmy Garoppolo? But do you think that overall that that's a that's a bad thing then for the Patriots? I think that now this is all bad. Yeah. You know? Well, it depends. I think it's, I think it's only bad if their interest in Trey Lance is real because Lance is the bigger project out of the you know the top four, top five quarterbacks. I think Justin Fields, maybe if he he goes in there, you could probably see him starting Week One. But the Mac Jones thing kind of, you know, him and Phil Sims are pretty buddy buddy. Him, Chris and, uh, Sims, Chris Sims, him and Shanahan and Chris Sims are pretty buddy buddy. And uh, Rich, you mentioned him before. He's been kind of spot on the last couple of years. So I mean, the interest is real in Mac Jones going to be in the number. Th- three quarterback there i mean that that has to spell bad for jimmy i think i think anything the 49ers are saying right now is completely and utter bullshit i think he's up for grabs and i think eventually if the patriots are offering maybe next year's first or something crazy like that to get him you know they're gonna if they really really want jimmy garoppolo you know 
I think they're going to go out and pay the price to get him. You know, they're not going to sit back and, and bank on him next year, you know, especially if they get the quarterback they want and he's going to play right away. Bye bye, Jimmy. So, I mean, that, I, I, <clears throat> that's where I'll jump off the train. Uh, I think I'm closer to you, Bill, in that Jimmy is still available because the other side of this is Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. He has a no trade clause. He has a little bit of leverage here. He's got a couple years left. He can sit out. He's made a little bit of money. Oh, I, don't I tell him he, to go fuck themselves. I don't think You're he's going to, but they've been Bye. dangling out there. They've, they've showed no confidence in him. No respect uh, for that kid no at respect. all. You trade up, you trade that much capital to the number three pick. You don't, th- okay. You want, you want to keep Jimmy around to groom him. You don't think that kid's getting a start week six find the bench Jimmy like come on oh look yeah at Tua. On. Look if, at I'm, Tua. if I'm done look at Tua. He, I'm like Jimmy example. we're not fucking staying Herbert San Justin Francisco, Herbert dude. same thing he didn't start well Justin uh, Herbert's the only reason he I started Taylor, Taylor, Taylor got his Taylor lung got his puncture lung collapse or whatever it was <laughs> yeah. but I mean you could see you saw like <laughs> That's insane by the way yeah the I know that there was not more coverage job. on that shit is just insane where's that lawsuit but no you saw it too a man uh Fitzpatrick was three and three when Miami made that move and he he was playing he had what one bad game and against the Patriots week two or week one or whatever it was the Patriots blew the doors off him and other than that I mean he played well and you saw them go right to two so I mean if I'm Jimmy yeah I'm I'm not coming especially if you see the quarterback off the board because I don't expect him to, to trade three first round draft picks for a fucking left tackle or a, or a fucking wide receiver no, or they're tight taking end a no they're taking a, in they're taking draft. a quarterback and if I'm Jimmy I see a first round quarterback. Uh uh-uh. uh. He saw what just happened with the Brady situation in New England. He was there firsthand. Yeah. He had to he got fucking traded because Brady wanted his Brady wanted to be there. Kraft got his, you know, Kraft got his way, traded Jimmy Garoppolo. He's seen it firsthand. If I'm if I'm Garoppolo, I'm forcing my way out now. So, uh uh-uh, uh, bye bye. So I'm just looking at this and I'm no cap wizard. And and you know, we know from Felger and Maz the cap is crap, and we we we've, we've seen that. You know, with the DAC signing, for example, the cap doesn't mean a whole lot. But in cash, I'm looking at the third overall pick last year in the draft. So it was uh, Jeff Okuda. Who's that? Some fucking lineman. He went to the Lions. No, he's cornerback. Cornerback? Okay, whatever. The total contract was $33.5 million. The signing bonus was $21.9 million. Expect that to be a little bit less this year. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo has his cash owed this year is 25 million. So the San Francisco 49ers is going to pony up $45 million in cash for quarterback play this year. They might. That would be for a guy that they don't believe in. Yeah. I mean, I think he's gone. Like this is your, what you're saying right now makes completely utter sense. This is why everybody and everybody in the fucking league thinks they're full of shit. Look at bill. He was full. Look how Adam Schefter, they wouldn't trade him for four first round draft picks. Well, what happened? You got him for, for a, a second. You traded for a yeah, second round pick. That was an ex- yeah, but hold on. That report came out at the NFL draft and they didn't trade Jim, Jimmy at the NFL no, draft and the, and the, and the, uh, in the Browns were basically going to give him four first round picks. And they said no, because they wanted to extend Jimmy. And then the whole Brady fucking palace Q happened. And that's why they traded him for well, a either second way. Round pick. So San Francisco is not a little bit like they, they disingenuous. They're full of shit. They're full of shit. Again, you traded three first round draft picks. You're not going to have a star quarterback. This is one of the deepest quarterback drafts that the NFL has seen. in God knows how long, you know, probably since at least Andrew Luck, that draft RG three came out. Russell Wilson was in that draft. I mean, shit. RG three was rookie of the year. You know, no, we haven't draft. we haven't seen a draft where oh. there's five quarterbacks that can go in the top six picks yeah. only because Cincinnati has Joe Burrow and shit he might not even play this year. So he's playing. Yeah, yeah I heard he, I heard he's playing too. <laughs> he broke his leg in a thousand pieces. Uh, Bill, anyway, you haven't. Um, is it good or bad for the Patriots? That and not moved, just that I, they I, moved I'm asked, up. I'm asking this question not just in the frame of Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, so we the the thought was before the trade from San Francisco that okay, Jimmy might be off the table here, but it sounds like the Patriots are going to make a move for quarterback in the first round. Well, you just had another team jump into the top ten that are looking for a quarterback. So hypothetically, that's one more quarterback off the board. And don't We're, sleep on Miami either. You know, you've heard Tua. You don't. You know. He might, well, Miami jumped jump back, jump up, back to up, sixth. up to sixth. Philly yeah, went Carolina back to twelfth. There. Carolina, you have to think. Of you. Denver's I mean, at nine. Yeah, all quarterback teams right there. You know, you're yeah. So you're you're you're. I mean, at best, we, I sent it to you. We we were kind of going back and forth. Like if you get lucky, maybe eighth 
is is the best or seventh is the best you can you can do and get up there and trade with. Fuck, sorry, who's at seventh? It's just before the Panthers, but they don't need a Atlanta? quarterback. No, Atlanta's fourth. Atlanta's oh, fourth. I don't, oh, I don't and, and Cincinnati's fifth. But again, it's. I think it's good in the long run for the Patriots because I mean, even if they keep Jimmy for one year, next year you're gonna get your guy. Where because where's Jimmy gonna get? He's gonna start. You have Cam Newton signed for one year. So necessary. You don't necessarily have to address your quarterback situation one year. You kind of built this offense to go at least a couple years, especially with your tight end position. And you know, if you think about the offense they built, it's already they built an offense for post Cam Newton. So I mean, if you wait, he's going to be available at some point. So what happens? You know, you might not get him at the draft. You might get him mid season at the trade deadline for whoever they pick: Mac Jones, Trey Lyle, or Lance. Any of those guys. I was just going to say that you got to think that Jimmy Garoppolo's value is going to drop is going to plummet if they wait to trade him at the trade deadline mid-season. his highest value is right now his highest value is right now trade, no right before the trade i mean the draft excuse me right before the draft is when the time to trade him well yeah oh yeah you might get some bidding wars yeah. the night of the draft and get someone to do something stupid yeah you'll but... see it as soon as after that third pick is announced you'll see you'll get i guarantee they'll, they'll try to get back in and i wouldn't be surprised if the patriots pony up that first you know you've oh, kind of it makes sense. Look, San Francisco just just dumped their 2022 first round pick. But they could Patriots all, yeah. will have one in the late rounds that they can give up. San Francisco can slide back right in where they where they dumped out. However, the reports at a, at a Patriots camp where they don't think Jimmy's worth more than a second, maybe a third. So this is where I think Belichick's mindset. And, and is this good for the Patriots? No, it's not because I don't think it makes Jimmy. I don't think. Bill Belichick was going to pay any more than a second or third round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. And he was willing to let him go and not get him because his plan B was to move up in the draft to the sixth spot or something with the Eagles and draft whoever fell, fell down midway between him and him and 15. Now, now, now you're, you've really narrowed who you can make a trade with and move up with. And you're down one less guy. Yeah. So you really have to like the guy that it, that drops. First of all, you can't just like go out on. I know that they've heavily scouted all of the top five quarterbacks in this draft. I can't imagine they like all of them equally. So the guy that you like has to drop and then you have to be able to make the deal. Or I think Belichick's mindset is if I can't get that done, I got the guy from Wake Forest or the guy from Stanford and I can get him in the second or late first, and we'll let Cam start the season. Yeah, who's and that A&M we'll guy, guy, too, in. that's kind of rising up the board? The A- Texas A&M I don't remember any of his names. I'm terrible at names. But the, I, I still think that judging on what Belichick did last year at the quarterback position and where he is, where he stands he's right now in his leverage, again. he's not going – he's not – he's not going – Jimmy's – Jimmy, he's not going to pony up a first-round pick for Jimmy Grappolo. I, I'll, I'll stake whatever reputation I have on that. He won't. He'll wait. He'll wait and see. He'll yeah. wait and see, and he'll draft a guy if Jimmy doesn't fall. Yeah, or he'll think... wait for the or the middle of the season and go pluck him for a second round, the same second round pick scenario that he did with John Lynch. No, it'll be a ago. third. It'll be a third round pick just to spite in San Francisco. Be yeah, like, fuck it'll win. You. Yeah. You're right. He'll, right? he'll win like, that. He'll fuck, fuck you. You, you get the my... third, and it's Brady's compensation pick uh-huh. just to oh oh him and Ernie Ooh. in the fucking film room <laughs> jacking Ooh. off. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you you know that that's the. You know, that the that's first the half of that Miami game that he started when Brady was out, they're probably just creaming each other's fucking dicks off. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Well, let's see how it shakes out. I agree with you, Ray. The initial reaction was like, oh, shit, here comes Jimmy. And then you start going through the different transactions and everything that needs to happen. I don't know. It still looks like Cam starting the year with a drafted quarterback. That's yeah, what it looks like. Seems that's like kind of what it looks like. Bleh. But who knows? Most realistic option. Who knows? I mean, if your pick is the twenty seventh next year, if you make the you make a run in the playoffs, you get a first round pick at the twenty seventh. That's I think I, I think anything after twenty five to you know fifty is worth it for Garoppolo, in my my opinion, or in even a sixty. So the whole second round, but I mean late first, yeah, all, absolutely bank well, the, on that. The the point is, if you think Jimmy Garoppolo is the guy, fifteen's worth it. One is worth it. If you think he's the guy, that's how important the position is. But Belichick hates to lose the value of the like he can't get himself to overpay for anybody unless it's Kyle Duggar 
who no one is going to draft for four rounds or the Nazi kicker from West Virginia that no one sees him doing just out of spite. Like he just will not bend to the norms of, of what should happen. And that's why I'm just going on track record, but this year has been different. Certainly has been different. So who knows? Uh, All right. uh, A couple last things here. Uh, Red Sox news. Here you go, Ray. This is, this is your fucking segment, buddy. Uh, Erod is not going to be the opening day starter. He has either, quote unquote dead arm Alex core also said there was some shoulder soreness look he hasn't pitched in a year I, I, he hasn't you know pitched in a year this guy he's the tin man he has no heart that's fine <laughs> I don't he doesn't need to throw like fine push him back but again he hasn't pitched in a year in so COVID world <laughs> oh, fuck it I don't care <laughs> He, he had I, – I can never pronounce the name of the heart condition that comes with COVID, and I don't remember. Theosis. No. Uh, damn it. Mal, mal, mal something. Um, and COVID side effects are real. I know we want to call everyone pussies and, and – Yeah. And uh, – or whatever you just said, Bill, but COVID side effects are real. It affects your body. And if you're physical, if you're – 712, yeah. If you're – if you're a <laughs> – professional athlete and you need your body to work at a, at a heightened condition and you have a track record of not really doing well with lingering injuries or, or ailments. I don't know if Erod's a guy that we can count on for the whole year. Like I, yeah. at any given day, he might be dropping off. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And that's what I said all along is that this guy wouldn't have a whole season because he's going to get hurt because he can't make it. And, Lo and behold, the obvious one was right again. He's not going on the fucking DL. They push his start back. Relax. Huh. Relax. Okay. Wait till next week. Uh, another guy that is not on I... the DL, but uh, relax. Matt Barnes uh, is on the – what do they call him in baseball? It's not the, the safety COVID, in health, like the, but – Yeah, COVID injured protocol. List, I think they call it the IL for COVID, basically. It's like five days. Or no. ten days, yeah, maybe seven. I seven think. days. You think yeah. you're right? Seven. And there's eight, um, eight other players. No names came out, and four staff members with contact tracing. So they've been hit <laughs> kind of hard. We're gonna get swept by the Oriole, Orioles on opening week. That's gonna be awesome. I mean, losing your starting <laughs> pitcher and your closer to uh, to start the year. See, well. I don't know if Barnes was gonna get there. Adam Montavino has been pitching really fast. Ah, they good. gave him the closer role going into the season. They said it was Barnes to start. I mean, Bill doesn't Adamino think that he deserves it. it. He doesn't care what Alex Cora has. I like Ottavino better, truthfully, but that's just me. Um, we'll see. We will see. Uh, Bill, quickly give us your uh, your recap on the UFC. I know you wanted to touch on it. Oh, my God. Francis Nagano knocked out Stipe last night. Stipe is supposed to be the best heavyweight of all time. He's had the most heavyweight fights, most title fight, consecutive title fights, three. So, I mean, he yeah, knocked out by Nagano. Nagano's fifth knockout in a row. The, the four others came with under – in the first minute, knocked him out in the second round. This sets up the mega, mega fight. John Jones, Francis Nogano for the heavyweight championship. And Jones is, yeah, he, he's, it looks like he's trying to back out. He wants money. You guys have been talking about money. John Jones fighting for a year since we've been doing yep. this. You've been talking about this getting it. John he wants Jones some fucking year. He wants some money. He wants yeah, the money. He's, he he'll wants sit the out. money. Yeah. yeah, he's already talking, you know, pay me, pay me. This is, Joe Rogan said last night, this is going to be the biggest fight ever. This is going to be the biggest UFC fight ever. So, I mean, like, don't the heavyweights get the most money draws, anyways, or light heavyweights, heavyweights? Like, aren't those like the big money draws, anyway? Uh, the, yeah, I mean, being two the, big the, dudes the, fucking just killing depends, each other. Depends, Fuck depends, yeah. on the, depends on the fights. It's usually like the out of your many Becky O, eh? Yeah, he's small. The, the lightweights in any, any right, division. You're in a time, Bill. Fights, this is yeah. the Civil Mind Sports Show. Monday headlines, March 29th. We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, boys, I'm really excited for this wrestling uh, <laughs> fucking show. I can't. This is fucking Bill's idea, not mine. <laughs> Whatever. It was a uh, joke. It was a legit joke. If you guys want to start it, I can roll in. You want us to do this? <laughs> Look how nervous he is. He's twiddling his thumbs like a little idiot. Why don't you go chug a couple beers, throw some liquid carbs on that diet? Mm. You know nothing about wrestling anyway. It's wrestling. Wrestling. I get a sick list. So what are we doing? Late 80s? Late 90s? All time. Yes. All time. All time. Oh, boy. Our, the list even got better. Our favorite right ass loser of all time. Hold on. Let me get the ledger.
babies. 